Well, hello to you and thank you for joining us. I'm Journey Taylor and I hope you've been enjoying your day so far. Let's bring a meteorologist Nathan Scott and Nathan. The early mornings and late nights have been nice and cool. However, throughout the middle of the day, some folks are calling it October Hottober. What can you think about that? Well, Journey, I think I can agree with it because we saw temperatures this morning into the 50s and 40s and things are really start to heat up already. 55 was the low in Little Rock, 49 in Fayetteville, 46 in Clinton. But look at the current temperatures. It's already 87 in Fayetteville at this time. 79 here in Little Rock, 78 in Stuttgart, wall to wall sunshine all across the natural state. For 24 hour temperature difference, it's 11 degrees warmer in Fayetteville than this time yesterday. About four degrees warmer here in Little Rock. So it's going to be a warmer day all across Arkansas. Yesterday, our highs were in the upper 70s to lower 80s. Today's highs, mid 80s, maybe upper 80s. Hot Springs, Arkadelphia going for a high of 90 in Texarkana, and certainly Fort Smith and Fayetteville will warm up well into the low 90s. Lows tonight, still comfortable, not as cool. We'll slide back down into the mid to upper 50s and check out what happens tomorrow. That is not October like weather. In fact, at 92, that's what the record high is set back in 2002. Will the 90s stick around for the weekend? I'll have that answer coming up. All right, thank you, Nathan. Now we have a crime alert to get to starting in Garland County. The sheriff's office reports one person is behind bars right now charged in a deadly shooting. It happened nearly two weeks ago on Reveille Terrence in rural. That's in the rural Garland County east of Hot Springs. When deputies got to the scene, they found Jonathan Huff shot and killed. We can confirm one suspect is arrested, but their name has not been identified. And in Pulaski County, the sheriff's office is identifying someone killed in a shooting Saturday. 34 year old Kristen Lee McDaniel of Ward was shot at the intersection of Highway 161 and Jamison Road. The sheriff's office arrested Natasha Trutka as a suspect. She is charged with capital murder. Now take a look at this. It's the latest major drug bust in Arkansas. This from the Conway County Sheriff's Office. They say they found more than 500 pounds of cocaine during a traffic stop Tuesday. During the stop, police say a deputy developed, quote, reasonable suspicion of a crime. That's what led to the massive seizure, which they say amounts to a street value of $22 million worth of cocaine. One person was arrested. Developing right now, unsealed filings from special counsel Jack Smith revealed previously unknown accounts from close aides to President Donald Trump in the waning days of his presidency. The documents accused Trump of resorting to crimes to stay in power. And as Natalie Brand explains, Smith is trying to make the case against Trump and his actions as a private citizen, not as a sitting president. The newly unsealed filing from special counsel Jack Smith describes how former President Donald Trump and his allies allegedly planned to challenge the 2020 election results in advance and pressure then Vice President Mike Pence to reject electoral college votes. If Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. According to the brief, Pence had warned Trump at least nine times after the election to give up his fight to prevent certification, saying he could run again next cycle. Trump allegedly replied 2024 is so far off. And when Trump was warned Pence's life was in danger during the attack, Trump allegedly responded, so what? These are all extremely important pieces of information because they go to the president's, the former president's knowledge and his intent. The 165 page filing also identifies a number of private individuals prosecutors allege worked with Trump as special counsel Jack Smith reshapes his case following the Supreme Court's landmark ruling over the summer, allowing some presidential immunity for certain official acts. The brief attempts to outline all of the evidence the prosecutor has to show that the actions of the former president were in his capacity as a private candidate for president, not in his capacity as president. The Trump campaign calls the filing, quote, falsehood ridden and unconstitutional. The former president has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. Legal analysts say the case won't go to trial before Election Day and will likely be shut down if Trump is elected. 
But several people close to Trump tell CBS News he's furious about the filing and say if he's defeated in November, will likely claim the election was stolen. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Well, back on the presidential campaign trail, both vice presidential candidates hit the battleground states following Tuesday's vice presidential debate. Minnesota Democratic Governor Tim Walz headed to Pennsylvania for a rally with Senator John Fetterman in York. The campaign says his Pennsylvania bus tour is the start of a cross country travel and fundraising blitz. Further east, Republican Ohio Senator J.D. Vance rallied in Michigan, talking manufacturing in the region known for its motor industry. While there, Vance was asked about his memorable exchange on Tuesday night with Walls. I'm focused on the election of 33 days from now because I want to throw Kamala Harris out of office and get back to common sense economic policy. Former President Donald Trump is set to rally in Pennsylvania on Saturday. He'll return to the location in Butler, where he was grazed by a would-be assassin's bullet. And as the October 7th voter registration deadline approaches, we have everything you need to get registered for the upcoming election in one spot. Just text the word vote to 501-376-1111 and we'll send a link to our voter guide straight to your phone. Well, happening later today on the heels of the National Night Out, the Sherwood Police Department is hosting another community engagement event. It's the inaugural Night to Unite, and they're going all out. They'll have several agencies there and all kinds of fun vehicles and equipment like drones, police motorcycles, and a tow truck and more. They'll also have free food, fun, and games for kids and live music from Grammy-nominated artist Kristen Davis. It's happening tonight at City Hall Park on East Kill Avenue from 5.30 to 8.30. Two racing teams, including one co-owned by NBA legend Michael Jordan, have filed an antitrust lawsuit against NASCAR and its chairman, Jim France. The teams are accusing the stock car series of acting like a, quote, monopolistic bullies, alleging its new profit sharing charter limits teams to its series tracks and suppliers. So far, NASCAR has not commented on the lawsuit. Bank of America says its issues are largely resolved after customers reported outages yesterday. Some clients claim they couldn't see their accounts and others who were able to access their accounts reported seeing a zero balance. So far, the company has not said what caused the issue. News of port strikes on the East Coast are resulting in panic by some Americans, with many asking what it could mean for our economy. Those same concerns are being heard here in Arkansas. In fact, you may already be seeing a rush to stores to stock up, but it might not be necessary. In the U.S., about 10 to 15 percent of goods are imported, meaning that we rely heavily on products from around the world. Experts in Arkansas say any effects of the strike may take some time to notice. And it depends on how long the strike lasts. If it lasts for a couple of days, maybe up to a week, most American consumers won't notice anything. If it lasts for more than a couple of weeks, then you're going to see costs go up on certain goods. So don't go panic. Let's don't make this a toilet paper of, uh, of 2020 all over again. And Arkansas retailers today have well-stocked shelves. They're ready to take care of customers. Uh, and if consumers don't, uh, don't panic and go and, and bulk buy, I think there will be plenty to go around. Experts also say if the strike is still going on a week from now, then you may want to be more strategic with what you buy. Well, we're saying goodbye to technology and hello to old fashioned conversation. Coming up, we're taking a look at a social club dedicated to a phone free environment. And we're saying goodbye to the cool fall like conditions we experienced yesterday because we're going to heat things up big time going into the weekend. But I'm watching another cold front moving in here next week. I'll let you know how low the temperatures may go with that one coming up.